So in today's video, we're going to have a look at a beginner's guide to Xero. So we're going to delve in on the computer here and I'm going to show you all around Xero and give you a quick user's guide to how to use Xero in the first place. So let's just dig into it. So we're going to sign in here. So within Xero, you need to be setting up two-factor authentication so that you get a notification on your phone um, when you're logging in. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that a second and I'm going to get a little prompt on my phone just letting them know that it is in fact me who is signing in. So I'm going to go to this demo company up here. So if you do have access to Xero already or um, you know, you've started a free trial with them, you do have access to the demo company where you can add and chop and change things as you go and just really get to grips with Xero a little bit. So let's take a look what we're looking at. So if you've used any other type of accounts or software before today, it's fairly similar. I really, whether it's QuickBooks, Sage or QuickBooks, for example, um, they're all pretty much the same. They all have to do pretty much the same thing. It's just that the layout is a little bit different. So up at the top here, we've got dashboard, business, accounting, payroll, projects and contacts. And then over on the right hand side over here, we've got the ability to edit our dashboard, which is what we can see here. And we can go to various settings and we can find things quickly using this or we can click on create new on here to create a new invoice, etc. as we go along. But I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so that you can see this just a little bit better. So if we go on the dashboard here, we've got a bank account just here at the minute. And we've also got a business savings account and we've got a little bit of a summary that's showing us total cash in and total cash out. Now, these are entirely optional on the right hand side, but you could set zero up to basically have a few accounts that you are watching that you want to keep a really close eye on. Um, you can even add um, total invoices O2 so you can see that on your dashboard, bills you need to pay and expense claims if applicable. So if we go into business just up here, what we've got is quite a few little things that we can dip in and out of. So I think this is really cool that they've added this, which is a short term cash flow. It might not be that cool if you're not an accountant <laughs> or a bookkeeper, but I, I like this. So here you can view your future and bank balance based on total invoices and bills that are in the system. So zero refers to sales invoices as, as invoices and then any expenditure is basically under bills. So a purchase invoice is a bill um, from their point of view. So you could select the bank and then you could say project time frame next 30 days. Let's see what's going on. So it says... Total invoices owe to you 13,000, total bills to pay, projected end balance 10,682. So this is showing a bit of a positive sort of balance going forward. And it also gives you a bit of a fat breakdown. Um, so if you've got the analytics plus feature on your account, um, this will show you an estimated VAT amount due. So I think that's really good, but you would have to pay for analytics plus. I don't think it's that much, but anyway. Um, and then we've got a business snapshot page here, which again, I really like so it gives you a quick PL, quick income on um, a certain um, time period so you can change that to be in year to date um, last month last quarter etc um, and this again is this analytics plus that they're sort of pushing at the minute on here that you can pay a little bit more to so if we go to invoices on here this is going to give you um, a snapshot basically of um, all of your sales customer accounts. So it's going to show you um, all repeating um, sales invoices, if there are any, um, any paid invoices, so paid sales invoices this is, and then any awaiting payment with details of what they are in totals. Those are waiting approval because you can actually set up approval um, types within Xero. So somebody could raise an invoice and it has to be approved, um, which is great. And then we've also got some drafts that have been created just here. Um, and then all which encompasses everything and from here from this page you can export that really quickly um, you can import sales invoices so you don't have to manually raise them every single time within zero which is great you can send statements out to customers new credit notes new invoices etc so let's just have a look at raising a um, invoice on here and what that kind of looks like so here um, we've got two so if we've already got a customer set up we can put their details in so if I just type H there we go we've got some individuals on here now I don't know um, of these which ones are um, customers and which ones are 
um, suppliers, so there's a real easy way of you finding that out. So if I just click on Hamilton Smith and then I go into here, okay, so this is showing me that they've got an invoice created um, previously, which means that they are actually um, a, a customer on here. So you could, if you wanted to, and it's something that I actually do within Xero, um, I edit um, the contact details of that person to just make it obvious whether or not they're a customer or um, a purchase account. Um, now, the reason why Xero don't distinguish between the two is because you could have somebody who's, um, you know, you're buying products off and also selling too. So up here, I would just say customer and then I would just save that and close to make it dead obvious. But anyway, so here's our date and we need to add in a due date. It won't let you save a sales invoice within zero without actually adding on a due date. So if I say the due date is the first in three days time, what Xero will automatically do is it'll pick up the next available um, sales invoice reference. So you can always guarantee that within Xero, um, the invoice references are going to be um, sequential, unless you manually change that, which I don't recommend that you do. Um, and the reference here, let's just call it, I don't know, monthly um, charge. Branding, so you can change the branding to special projects, a very orange invoice <laughs> and standard here. Um, but anyway, now if you've got items, so you've got inventory items, you can select them within a sales invoice. but in this case, I'm just going to write a description to say uh, this is the monthly charge for July 2023. Quantity is one. We're charging 1500. They don't get a discount, but you could put a discount in there if you wanted to. And this is defaulted to the sales account because it is a sales invoice. But if you wanted to change that for whatever reason and say you had like multiple different revenue accounts in your chart of accounts, you could select a different one from down here. Now something that's really cool within um, Xero, I'm going to keep saying cool, um, it's cool to me because I say I love this stuff, um, but you could actually set up default codes for each one of your contacts in here which I'll show you how to do in a second. So then we've got tax rate, so again this is going to default to 20% fat on income um, if you've got um, your tax account set up, so if you tell Xero that you know you are VAT registered. Otherwise, you can default everything to no VAR, which is where you're not VAT registered. So this here is saying no tax, tax exclusive, tax inclusive. So watch what happens if I change this to tax exclusive. So it's now adding £300 onto the invoice. If I change it, it's just 1500 and it calculates the VAT on that amount. So be careful when you're using sales invoices that you don't accidentally select the wrong one and either overcharge or undercharge your customers. So imagine that that's great. Um, I like it, but I want to preview it before I approve. That's showing me what this is going to look like to this individual. And we've got, you know, our payment details on there, um, pay now, etc. Um, company registration number, the office, everything on there. To and from, it's got our VAT number on. Perfect. And we can see what it looks like on a mobile as well. I really like that. And there you go. So if I wanted to have someone else approve it, I could click on save. So why don't we just do that now so I can show you what it looks like. And it'll take me back to the overall sales picture. So then I can go on to um, drafts, which is automatically defaulted to. Click into it or click on there. And if I think this is great, I just approve it. Now that hasn't gone anywhere. So we've got um, a um, customer contact detail in here um, that says info at hsg.co. So what you can do when you raise an invoice in here is you can email that out to the client. So you can do that really easily by clicking on email and it will ask you what the email address is if you haven't already set it up um, within the customer contacts and you can type it in there and type in multiple um, contacts by just adding a comma onto it um, and you can say include file as PDF attachment, mark as sent and send me a copy if you wish to. So I'm not going to do that but as simple as that or you can print the PDF and send it to them manually or print it off, send it to them etc. So there you go.